Hey guys, how's it going and thanks for coming. I'm Nick and this is Real Life Money where we talk about real life and money because you know schools aren't. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. So let's get started. So big video of the month for basically everyone in the financial community of three stocks to buy or looking to buy, whatever you want to call it, for the next month of August 2018. Now I know a lot of people are interested in more growth stocks of course and I've been looking around and a lot have been going up and up and up recently so they're kind of at a higher point so that's why I'm not going to focus as much on them. I do have one growth stock that I'm going to start out with. It has been knocked down for a couple reasons. Um, then a more safe stock and then something new and different uh, something that I normally don't look at. Uh, but we'll go into that as well with a new and completely different type of strategy that you can play uh, Aside from stocks We'll talk about it. definitely interesting. I'm starting to learn more about it. I Learned in the past, you know, I went to college for this stuff. So we kind of learned through that as well um, But this strategy could definitely be interesting Anyway, let's get into it guys The first stock that I'm going to be looking at is the growth stock that I talked about with you just before is Alibaba. So their ticker symbol BABA, -A, they have been very interesting recently um, for a couple different reasons. You can see their one year chart has been kind of down. They have been over $200 at one point. Uh, I don't like, I always say this, I don't like to purely focus on the one year target estimate, what uh, analysts look at but they are looking at a 250. So they're liking the stock. Uh, their PE ratio is 50. And by the way, if you don't know what Alibaba is, it's basically China's version of Amazon. So if you think Amazon stock is way overpriced, overvalued and everything like that, I actually just had a recent video going over that. It was one of my best investments, um, but they're high at this point. So if you want, some type of growth with a little bit more value behind it or a little bit more reasonable Alibaba could be that pick so a little bit more information with them you can see like we saw before the trailing PE just over 50 but their forward PE is a bit lower uh, just under 22 level and with this type of growth that's actually a decent level for that. Obviously comparing to like Amazon's forward PE, which is like 90, it's like nothing compared to that. But uh, their 52 week change has been fairly strong, nothing amazingly crazy, but still very nice at a 23%, definitely more than the overall market of around 13 and a half. Well, 52 week change, sorry not year to date year to date has been a little bit uh iffy if i do say so myself so you want to see growth we're going to look at some growth this is their revenues you can see from 2015 they have been increasing every single year like very nicely and even more important in my view than revenues is net income if they're actually making more money at the end of the day uh, so their net income is increasing very nicely a slight drop a few years ago but is rebounding and you can see some of their charts that they're looking very nice so going into a little bit of their actual business we could see they have obviously multiple businesses have multiple departments um, but this is their revenue breakdown their core commerce is at just over 8 billion it was up over 60 percent year over year cloud computing up over a hundred percent digital media and entertainment up uh, 34 percent and innovation initiatives eight percent and more staggering numbers increasing revenue even higher than Amazon I just checked I think it was around a 40 percent where Alibaba is up over just over 60 percent year over year for their revenue so they definitely have growth behind them but what's the main reason why they're actually down well if you've been watching the news or anything about the stock market or just the world in general a bunch of trade wars are going on with china so when trump talks to china and all these different people uh 
stocks don't really do that good just because it brings uncertainty to the market and this keeps hammering especially Chinese companies and there's a lot of huge Chinese companies out there I picked Alibaba I like them a lot there's also JD that's a hot stock right now where a lot of people are looking at as well as Tencent and that new one I don't know if anyone knows how to pronounce it but ticker symbol is IQ that's kind of like China's form of Netflix that has been all over the place very hot might be a little bit risky and volatile I don't think they're making any money right now um, but if you want that risk and possible huge return definitely look into them so anyway going into this uncertainty with all this trade wars going on with China the Chinese economy is not looking the best right now um, so it's dragging down a bunch of China's stocks like Alibaba and other Chinese companies however like we just saw with the revenues and everything they're increasing like crazy now they might start slowing that's definitely a possibility with these changes but they're huge you know especially with this online market China has a huge economy obviously um, and I think the growth for this company especially forward PE of course it's only an estimate of just over 20 though is pretty attractive especially compared to other similar companies like Amazon so this might not be the single most best time to get into not only Alibaba but other Chinese companies um, but it might be interesting to start putting in shares like start building a position in this type of company because the company's phenomenal the CEO Jack Ma very very awesome person I definitely want to start doing more research into him but he's very intelligent man so I would rather get in like a smaller position just in case it starts creeping back up and if it continues to get hit with more uncertainty I think that would be an interesting opportunity to build your position because over the long term it could definitely blow over just like everything else unless something crazy happens so definitely continue doing your research but I think that would create a buying opportunity to increase your position so for the long term you could make some nice money so that was the first stock moving on to the second stock that I'm looking at kind of the opposite of growth more of a stable slash income play just because the market is still steady uh, it's just unstable it's all over the place and since like the beginning of the year year to date has been fairly flat maybe it's like slight increase also determining like what stocks you're in so in that environment a flat environment a good play would be dividends because if you could stay as flat as you want and you could still make money with dividends and one of my most favorite dividend companies is Johnson and Johnson you could see they have been down for the past year so that definitely makes them attractive they have a good dividend of 2.86 at the current levels and again analyst estimates I don't like to go by it but I just like to see their perspective of 143 so you can see they are down for the year so that's not the best but a lot of these dividend companies are down just like in consumer staples like Procter & Gamble Kraft Heinz a uh, bunch of stuff uh, General Mills like a bunch of those uh, companies with high dividends are low because I think a lot of people are focusing more on growth so these aren't as attractive when they do become attractive investors were going to flock toward these guys I don't know how long this is going to take but when that does happen it could definitely increase just this whole industry as a whole so Johnson & Johnson forward PE of around four and a half uh, 14 and a half very low and they're part of the dividend aristocrats so their dividend is really safe you're always going to get that um, and it's just one of those like recession proof stocks if God I don't want to say God forbid a crash happens I like, would kind of like a crash to happen to get more cheap stocks um, but if it does happen you could hold Johnson & Johnson and continue getting those dividends and it won't get hit as hard 
just because they have so many different brands that we use every single day. Just to show you real quick their diversification of how many things they're involved with, uh, you could see sales by business. They have baby care, beauty, oral care, women's health, and continuing down the road. Um, they are in like pharmaceutical stuff, like healthcare and stuff like that. So a bunch of different things. Now this isn't necessarily like a flat grow not flat growing but like a flat company you could see their revenue year over year is up over 10 percent so it still has that growth behind it that's the diff difference from other dividend plays other companies are either flat maybe losing a little money maybe like a one like just a couple percent increase Johnson & Johnson, I noticed, is at that 10% year over year. So that's what I like. Nice dividend. For the long term, I'm liking it. So for the third stock that I'm looking to possibly buy in the next month of August 2018 is not necessarily one stock, but a bunch of them is an ETF, an exchange-traded fund. Um, and this is focusing on financial so let's check them out this is vanguard financials etf i was looking at other different etfs and i found this one to be in my opinion something that i would like to own um so you can see their one year chart has been especially since the beginning of the year kind of flat there are ups and downs but overall kind of just middle of the road their yield is at 1.88 we're gonna see in a couple seconds their holdings that they actually have and you can see their expense ratio 0.1 percent because they are under vanguard their fees are ridiculously low so i love dealing with vanguard i personally have a retirement account with them as well quick bonus tip now i'm going to tell you an interesting strategy in just a minute but i want to show you guys the holdings of this etf of course the largest banks that we could imagine uh so you could see the holdings that we have here uh, jp morgan bank of america wells fargo berkshire hathaway berkshire hathaway of course has a bunch of different stocks as well uh they actually had a recent uptick because they were talking about uh possible buybacks in the future so that made it go up around like five percent it might be back down a little bit since then uh, but Berkshire is a great play as well and of course some other banks including uh, American Express some credit cards and stuff like that so I like this for a couple different reasons uh, just the financial sector as a whole just with the increasing interest rate environment this might be slower than expected. You know, it might not happen overnight, but with increasing interest rates, uh, that would mean banks would be able to make more money with that. The Fed's saying that we are planning on increasing them a couple times this year. Not sure when they're expecting for the next one, um, but we are ridiculously low at this point. So there's really nowhere else up to go but up with interest rates. Um, so that's a good thing for banks. The second reason, not the interesting strategy I'm going over with you, but stick around in, in like a minute. Uh, but the second reason why to hold bank stocks is they do have dividends. Not crazy dividends, like this yield is a 1.88. Um, it is better than any savings account, so you have that dividend along with that growth. Um, so if it stays still like it has been, you could still collect the, those dividends. Moving into that interesting strategy. This is dealing with options, guys. I'm not going to dive deep into it because there's a lot of moving parts. I wanna just give you an idea of options. And I'm talking about selling covered calls. This is a specific type of option strategy. So I know of options. I learned about that on my own through college and I might want to start looking into it. I personally didn't invest using options yet, uh, but it's definitely an interesting strategy. Um, now buying options, by the way, options expire. There's like a certain time horizon that you could have. It could be like a week, could be a month, could be a few months, um, but it could expire. If it doesn't do the thing you want it to do, then you just lose how much money you put into it. 
Options are interesting because it kind of leverages how much stock that you control. So, for example, instead of owning, let's say, like one share of some company for a certain amount, one option contract, you're able to control a hundred shares. So with less money, you'll be able to control more shares. It is interesting. I'm planning on doing a whole video of that in the future. So stick around on the channel, subscribe for that video coming up. Um, but an interesting strategy, especially with financials, is riding covered calls. So how that works, you would buy, let's say, 100 shares of, I'm going to use the example of this ETF. So you buy 100 shares, or it could be of any company, and you sell an options contract. Now when you sell that contract, you get a premium because someone's going to buy that. So let's say you put, a, they're called a strike price. So once it hits that strike price, that's when you have to sell those 100 shares. I wanna to try to make it easy for you. Some, it's a little difficult, but I'm gonna use specific examples. So let's say a stock is at $50 and you're, you have a strike price of $60. So you sell the contract, someone buys it, so you get that premium up front. And since it's a dividend payer, you know, while you're holding those shares, you're still getting dividends. Um, and if it doesn't hit that $60 by the end of that contract, let's say it could be like a month, maybe a couple months, you keep those shares, you keep that premium and those dividends. Now the good or bad thing, depending how you look at it, when it hits that $60 strike price, that's when you sell those shares. So you could get money from the premium, from the dividends, and the profit of that capital gains from the $50 to the $60. I'm telling you this might be a little bit more advanced, um, but I know there are different levels of people out there. So for like beginners to a little bit more diving into numbers type of people. But I'm picking this because financials as a whole, like banks have been fairly steady for since year to date. So if you're writing covered calls and they're not hitting your strike price, you're holding those shares, collecting those premiums and dividends this entire time and not selling a single share because it, they're not really going too high. This is a very cool way to actually make money even in a flat market. You wouldn't want the stock to go too high because then you would have to sell it, um, but maybe you don't wanna hold the shares for too long, so when you sell it for capital gains, you don't have the shares anymore, that's not a bad thing. But I'm gonna stop with that. Not going in too much deep in detail, but that type of strategy, it exists a little bit more advanced, but you can play it like that, especially with financials right now. Um, so just wanted to expand your brain meat a little bit, guys. So if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I'm trying to give you guys bonus content over there. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe. So I'll see you guys in the next one.